Have you ever been curious about the experience of playing Wolfenstein on its hardest difficulty? This is the Uber Hero achievement for Wolfenstein The New Order. However, in this case, Uber doesn't mean an Indian guy who drives you home after a long night out. It instead means hours of punishment while you make your way through an alternate history version of World War II. On the bright side, I was playing one of the best FPS games of the last decade. On the other side though, my mental state was falling faster than Stevie Wonder going down the stairs. Would I persevere through the pain, or would I give up like my dad fighting for my custody? Let's get to the point. The Naraka. Blade Point. That's right, this video is sponsored by Naraka Blade Point. Attention, action game lovers, the Naraka Wolong crossover will be available from March 2nd. Naraka and Wolong are both free on Xbox Game Pass. In Naraka, you can join in game events to get various Wolong styled cosmetics for free, including the mask of the famous general, Lu Bu. Besides, you'll be able to claim two exclusive outfits which are inspired by the characters of Naraka in Wolong's future DLC. Naraka is free on Xbox Game Pass, but if you don't have it, that's no worries, because there's a free weekend coming up between the 5th 15th of March running through to the 19th of March. That will be available on the official website and the Epic Games Store, and there is also a 50% discount running between the 15th of March all the way up to the 21st of March. So if you jump in during this free weekend and end up having a great time, you can get a beefy discount on Steam and Epic. Naraka has pioneered a unique combination of melee weapons and hero skills in the battle royale genre, offering limitless combat possibilities. The game features a wide collection of melee weapons, while each of them has a dynamic moveset that leads to various fighting styles and powerful combos. Unlike some no-brain shootout, the game's counter system allows you to predict enemies' next attack moves and use the corresponding actions to counter them. The key to winning is literally just, I predicted your prediction. But wait, did you hear the roar of the tiger? That's Akos. He's the first hero in Naraka who can transform into a beast. Fast, cunning, brave, Akos will be one of the best choices to win the battle. The new hero Akos prepares to join the battlefield on March 16th. If you're interested at all, be sure to check out the links in the description, and thank you to Naraka for sponsoring this video. We kick off the game in 1946, having a good old sleep as Captain BJ Blaschkowitz while flying into the heart of a German castle. Doesn't seem like the ideal time to grab a nap, but I can't blame anyone for wanting to catch a good 8 hours. I hop onto the gunner, taking out planes left, right and centre, but eventually get nailed by a falling plane. Our co-pilot, Mr. Fur Fergus Reed, a big raging Scottish lad, hits us with a mercy res as the Germans watch on letting it happen, like my teammates in Overwatch. We abandon our plane to meet up with some of the lads on a new one, but it would seem my game didn't get the memo that we needed to stay in this new plane. After reloading the checkpoint, it would appear I was just ahead of the curve, as we end up crashing this plane into the water anyway. It wasn't exactly the hot bubble bath I was dreaming of, but it was nice to freshen up before finally getting into combat and mowing down groups of Germans. Also yes, I will be calling them Germans throughout this video, as YouTube wouldn't like it if I called them the n-word. Nazis, that is. Nearly 10 years later, and the combat still feels incredible. Plus, letting you dual wield two assault rifles is the most alpha male shit I've ever seen in the video game. Nearly as alpha male as leaving a like on this video. I'd also be making a lot of use of the excellent stealth in this game, which of course I'm a pro at from all the times I had to hide away from my stepdad after he'd come home from the pub. Feeling confident as I blew through these first combat encounters, I would quickly be humbled by none other than my own stupidity. What? No way, is that actually my first death? It was my first death from me not moving far away enough from the door? <laughs> so, after taking an explosion safety course, I would stand an appropriate distance away from the door this time, allowing me to continue my murderous rampage. If there was any tips I had for the uber difficulty, it would definitely be abuse the leading mechanic like it's your meat on December 1st, as the AI kind of sometimes doesn't really cop on to what you're doing, and you can just kind of cheese it. It doesn't always work, but it definitely works sometimes. It also really reminded me of playing Siege, except it was even better than Siege, because my teammates didn't call me racial slurs and say rude things about my mother when I couldn't clutch up a 1v5. I meet back up with the lads and we repel up the castle to invade the upper floors. I continue using stealth, which is made easier now that I have a silenced pistol. It really makes you feel like a World War II John Wick. So, BJ's massive cock ends up weighing him down while trying to make a jump, and we fall through into some sort of German testing facility where they were doing some pretty messed up experiments. The scariest part, however, is meeting Death's Head, the leader of all these experiments. My guy has created robot dogs, 10 foot tall mechs, but still can't come up with a solution for hair regrowth. How embarrassing. Anyway, he's got us captured and we have to make a decision over who dies, the Scottish lad that revived us earlier, or some American kid who hasn't really done anything. I save Wyatt, the American kid, because we couldn't have Death's Head using his DNA, as that isn't just DNA inside Wyatt. 
it's USA. Old Scottish matey dies a pretty demonetizable death, leaving BJ and Wyatt to escape out the window, where unfortunately, BJ gets hit by some shrapnel straight to the dome, leaving him unconscious to fall in the water. We would then kind of get visions and memories of a nurse taking care of BJ while he was in a vegetative state, working up the worst swamp ass you could possibly imagine. Years would pass in the blink of an eye, but one thing that would remain consistent was the nurse who was taking care of BJ. That was until the Germans arrived and started killing everyone, because I guess they lost another World Cup final. BJ, despite not having moved an inch in years, suddenly springs into action because nothing gets this man going in the morning quite like the smell of blood. Glossing over the fact that it's a miracle this man can even move his body at all despite sitting in the same chair for years, he works his way through the care home, taking out anybody who dared to stand in his path. We'd head outside to find the nurse who looked after us and pop her in a car so we can dip. Again though, a man who was paralysed for years on end driving a vehicle five minutes after getting his motor functions back doesn't exactly seem road safe to me. However, I guess we're at a point where Germans still hadn't passed the bill on allowing women to drive, so at least with the nurse in the passenger seat and BJ driving, we were law-abiding citizens. We pull up to her parents' place, which seems a little bit forward. I mean, we haven't even gone out for coffee yet, and she's introducing me to her old man. It turns out her name is Anya, and we're in Poland. It's 1960, and the Germans have won the war. BJ's instant response is to get a resistance going. But there is a resistance. They're just all held captive somewhere in a prison. To find out where this prison is, BJ does a little bit of light negotiating with a German officer, using persuasive, gentle, and fair tactics. So after coming to a mutual agreement with the German officer, Anya's dad gives us a lift to the nearest station so we can travel to the prison camp and free the resistance. On our way, we have to stop and take out various German soldiers where I encounter my first big mecha boy. They were very intimidating, but immediately became less so intimidating when I found out I could just peek around a corner and take them out. Was it a massive bitch move? Yes. Do I care? No. We arrive at the station and hop on the train, with our only objective being blend in and not get sussed out by the Germans. I immediately proceed to sit down with the German officer and her sexually confusing right-hand man Booby. Yes, yes, his name is actually Booby. Anyway, after a little bit of conversation, she lets us go because apparently I'm a beautiful Aryan boy, which definitely helped boost the self-confidence. We get back to our carriage with Anya, but there's only one bed, so she asks if we'll be comfortable sharing. The next scene was her riding BJ, so yes, I would say he was pretty comfortable sharing. Also, after 14 years of inactivity, BJ must have busted the fattest nut you've ever seen. At the prison, it it was now time to be sneakier than my uncle, as we worked our way trying not to get spotted. If we did get spotted here, however, it wasn't all bad, as everyone mutually agreed to not use firearms, so we all just end up having these goofy melee battles. We don't hit each other, we don't stab each other, we both don't want to be here. Let's just move on with our lives. Let's just move on- Ah! No! Bad- Bad boy! Bad- Bad boy. Once inside the prison, I find a guard who seemed to be struggling to get his flow going, so I asked him if he needed me to hold his cock for him. He proceeds to aggressively shove me, so I take that as a no and stab him in the stomach. As far as difficulty was concerned, I wasn't really having much trouble yet, besides dying a couple of times, but that was mostly due to my own idiocy more than the game. Apart from this one. This was bullshit. I find the resistance fighters and they're repping some very kinky masks. But there would be no time for BDSM here as the alarm was blaring and the Germans were on their way. Fortunately, the stealth master returns as I make my way behind them using a vent, but it would turn out all the time I spent sneaking, looting and taking the piss would cause some damage to the resistance, as the only one left of the group we had 30 seconds ago is Wyatt. My, my bad I guess, I think all their deaths are on my hand. Wyatt, both confused and pleased to see BJ, shows him the way to break out of here and join back up with the rest of the resistance. All we have to do is fight 700 Germans and deep water dive for a full minute. Eventually we make it underneath Berlin and meet up with the lads. The resistance is a true force to be reckoned with. It consists of BJ, Wyatt, a woman in a wheelchair, a stoner who plays a guitar, a former Nazi and a big unit who has an ashtray dent in his head and starts crying when he can't watch Thomas the Tank Engine. Germany is true Truly shaking in their boots at the sight of us. I take a look around the gaff to see what we were working with and couldn't help but notice there wasn't a shower anywhere to be seen, so it would appear the resistance is pretty resistant to smelling good. <laughs> I'll see myself out. I did find a toilet, which flushes clean D-Lo, so on the bright side, we have a fully functioning plumbing system down here. With BJ now here, the lads devise a cunning plan to attack a German facility in London so we can steal some of their aircrafts. This genius plan, you ask? Drive into there with a ton of explosives and let BJ, the guy who was in a coma a couple of days ago, clean up whatever German forces remain. 
And let me tell you, the ones that did remain showed me absolutely no mercy. This is where the uber difficulty really starts to show itself. Okay. Okay. You. Uh, 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 okay. 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 This is this has gone horribly wrong. This has gone horribly wrong. Okay. All right. We'll we'll we'll, we'll try again. Oh come on. Who, who, who are you? Who are you? Why are you there? What are you doing? Can you not see I'm just trying to kill a robot? Listen, 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 lad, listen, listen. What do you mean? That was so quick! Okay, I'm alright. I don't even know who killed me. What? Excuse me? What? Did I just die from that falling on my face? Oh, fuck. Am I not supposed to stand on top of an elevator while I shoot the brakes out? Oh, no! Oh, okay. This entire London mission would culminate in a huge battle in the hangar, which would be by far the most challenging combat section of the entire game up until this point. It threw everything at me, including the kitchen sink, but despite me struggling through the rest of the level earlier, I aced this one on my first try. I don't really know what happened here. Apparently there's rumours swirling that I was using performance enhancing drugs, but I would just like to put it on the record. I am not Russian. So after clutching up, the rest of the resistance comes in to steal the aircrafts, and I can't help but feel like I'm doing all the heavy lifting here. I'm fighting 700 Germans a day while they sit around and eat toast. Even when I'm back at home base with them, I still have to do the dirty work, like getting rid of some mold so no one catches a cold. The next mission would see BJ purposely going to prison so he can break out someone called Set Roth. Set has some valuable information that could help us fight the Germans. While I love this level, there really wasn't anything challenging about it, so I'll mostly skip this as I don't really have much to show you. Apart from the woman we met on the train getting her jaw broken by a rebellion robot. That was pretty funny. With Mr. Set Roth now broken out, it would come to light that this information he knew is that he was actually part of some kind of Illuminati, which has technology light years beyond anything the German have. It's nice to now have someone who actually adds something of value, because until now, I've been the only one working on this group project, and everybody else has just been claiming the A-star for being on my team. Set was going to show us a super secret facility, but to get there, we would have to go through the absolute worst part of the game yet. Not only did this little underwater vehicle have some of the worst controls I've ever felt, so that sucked. We would encounter the worst enemy type in the entire game. These guys. Not only do they have a weak point on their back, which you have to shoot first to even make them vulnerable to damage, they also decided to give them shotguns with deflective ammo. So even if you're around a corner, don't worry. They'll just spam that scatter gun and the bullets will deflect off every wall near you until they eventually hit you. Who this guy? I hated every encounter with them. It never got easier. And I can safely say, I'd rather watch Amy Schumer perform stand-up comedy than I would fight them ever again. Oh good, there's two of them. Oh good, there's two of them. Oh good, there's two of them. Eventually, after a lot of pain, I would meet back up with the boys, Wyatt and Set, and we would go for a little deep sea diving. We're not here to study oceanic life, however. We're here to see a top secret Illuminati facility that's hidden in the water. The place was pretty cool, but honestly, felt like an unnecessary flex from Set. Like we've been living in a sewer, having to bathe in each other's bath water, while this place has just been sitting here, unoccupied. Anyway, we grab a big ball device, which will help us out on our next mission. The next mission, we had to take out Death's Head lead scientist, who was traveling across this bridge. We dropped the ball device, it destroyed the bridge, and it was off we went. I jumped too soon! It was, it was great level design, fighting on a collapsing bridge, but what wasn't great level design was everything else about it. I died a few times early on. Oh, no! Okay. <laughs> but what really broke me was this section. You see, as I jumped off the aircraft, it checkpoints me with 20 health and no armor. So every time I die here, I respawn with basically no health. And as if that wasn't bad enough, there was also a deflecty bullets boy up here. So I was truly suffering. Ah! All right, here's the strat. I run through. Just run, just run, just run, just run. No, okay, the run strat doesn't work. I have 60 HP, that's slightly better. 60 HP in a dream. My dream didn't last very long. Why are you, you weren't in there last time. Where did you come from? 
Did I do it? Woo! Stop. Stop it, you. I'm going in here. No, see you later. Hello, sir! <laughs> oh. No, if I have to do the whole section again, please don't make me do that whole section again. Oh. 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 HP. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Scientist Man. This entire section of the game hurt my confidence more than the time when I went for a prostate exam and the doctor didn't even call me afterwards to arrange dinner. Like it's not okay to stick your finger up there and not follow up afterwards. I felt used. So we eventually found this scientist, stole his suit, and made our way onto a ship so we could send it to the moon. Apparently Germany watched the 2010 smash hit film Despicable Me and were inspired by Gru to steal the moon. The moon is probably my favourite mission in the entire game and I really didn't have any trouble with it whatsoever. You can pretty much stealth the entire thing so that's exactly what I did and it alleviated a lot of the difficulty. I wish it was more difficult so I could show you guys more of this level but I'm sure everyone watching this video has probably played Wolfenstein before anyway. And if you haven't, uh, do it. Like right now. Coming back down to earth however was definitely not so much of a breeze. You know how earlier I got checkpoint locked and spawned with 20 health? Well, that happened again. Only this time it was even worse because I was trapped in a corner with limited ammo and there was a deflecty bullets boy. Ah! No! Please! No! 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 You know what, just kill me. I deserve to die for that. Please. Please. Oh, so now you want to miss every shot, huh? When I want to die. No! Please! Around the corner and I have deflecting bullets! Like, what can I do? Stop. Uh, the deflecting bullets, bro. The deflecting bullets. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, the relief. Oh, checkpoint. Checkpoint. I'm so grateful to see you. So after conquering what I thought would be impossible, my next encounter with a deflecty bullets boy. Whoa, oh, fucking hell, that's gonna shit out of me. I would make the stunning and brave decision to just not fight him at all. Go, go, pick the lock, pick the lock. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Where is it? Pick it, pick it, pick it, pick it. Go, 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 go. And as if the last 15 minutes wasn't traumatizing enough, the game would then throw a giant four-legged robot boss at me. I've heard that this is actually what they have to use to airlift your mother to the hospital. So I slapped my meat around to get ready for my hardest challenge yet, but in reality, it was actually really easy. I just had to hide in the tunnels and shoot his weak points. It hit me when I returned to Earth. Canonically, BJ was the first American to step foot on the moon, as this takes place in the 1960s. So while I was up there, pushing mankind forward and breaking the racial oppression Americans were facing. The resistance were down here twiddling their thumbs and getting found by the Germans, and a large majority of them got kidnapped. It was finally time to make our way to the castle to not only get the resistance back, but also to take out Death's Head once and for all. I thought tooth and nail, died quite a few times, but honestly, not that much compared to what I had been through on the previous mission. And we push on to find our resistance friends. Anya was there, but there was no time for feet picks as we had to make our way to Death's Head. Now, while a lot of games feel like the final boss fight is disappointing and is actually easier than a lot of the game itself, I cannot say the same about Wolfenstein. Death's Head was brutal. For starters, he is in a giant mech because him and his failure of a hairline are too much of a bitch to fight us in the streets. You then have to shoot down two zeppelins, but doing this is so difficult as the output of damage he does when you head to them is ridiculous. That is until you realise that there's a timing to do it and then you have to just have to wait a little bit basically. So yeah, I got that wrong. Once the zeppelins were down, he then falls through the floor into a pit of pipes that set on fire when shot and you have to sprint for your life, dodging him and the fire while also doing damage to him. Which by the way, he tanks a lot of. I was struggling so much, I died so many times. That is, until once again, I realized I made a huge mistake. There's actually an armory that you can go to before dropping down that arms you to the teeth. So rather than just using laser guns and shotguns like I was, I now had every single gun in the game and defeated him first time with all these extras. <sighs> The biggest challenge to these achievement videos is never actually the difficulty of the game, it's always my own stupidity. So, too injured from all that we've endured, we give the order to the resistance to blow the place to the ground while we're still in there. Possibly sacrificing ourselves, but we'll never know because the credits roll and we pop that achievement. Uh, I mean, I mean, we will know actually because a sequel will come out a couple years later, which confirms BJ is very much alive. So yeah. Ooh, I forgot how much I love that game. 
Wow, what a game. Alright, well, we played that on Xbox Game Pass on PC, not on Xbox, so I didn't get the achievement pop-up. But as you can see here, boy, this is my account. Uber Hero, we have the achievement unlocked. Wolfenstein on Uber is done. Speaking of that second game, if you would like to see me suffer through the permadeath mode they added to that game, then, then leave a like and let me know in the comment section below. If you'd like to see me suffer through some more achievements, click the video on the screen, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.